So I needed to make a cabinet and therefore I decided to make an Art Nouveau and peacock cabinet. I went through my Art Nouveau book and had some images that were inspiring and I kind of collaged them to make a beautiful peacock Art Nouveau drawing. I then with a multitask tool uh, started carving out some of the bigger chunks around the edges. The piece of wood I was working with was about two feet wide, three feet long, maybe two and a half inches thick, and I wanted to make um, some sections pop, of course, and so therefore I had to think of carving out different layers. So once I was done with going around the edges and taking out big chunks, I really had to focus on making the circle section kind of like a, a tube. So it's like two circle sections coming together around the peacocks, um, making a clean transition with their tails and, and everything else to the edge of the cabinets, if that makes sense. So I had to make a flat um, section of wood circular and brought in on both sides and again the uh, this tool which is usually used for construction worked out beautifully in my opinion with taking out a lot of those bigger chunks The last uh, area that needed big chunks removed was around the peacocks. Again, I like to think of when I'm carving something as different layers, and the, the layer that I wanted to be the most visible was the peacock. So I really tried to use the depth of the wood to really make those peacocks pop with a negative space. So I had to take out a lot of wood around them.
so sometimes when I create something, I leave things that need more editing, and sometimes I think of something to do with them. In some in this case, there's these kind of gem-like structures. They're taking the two circles and making them kind of an oval shape, and they kind of hold everything together on the top and the bottom. And I thought it would come to me doing something, but sometimes it comes to you when you're working on a project, and it comes naturally, and sometimes it doesn't. And you have to go look at inspirational photos. And of course, I whipped out my favorite Art Nouveau book and looked at some of the images that I thought, thought were inspiring. Um, I like a lot of the Art Nouveau jewelry, but I have to say I wanted something jewel-like to tie the two pieces together. But Art Nouveau jewelry looks not like Art Nouveau jewelry. And a side note, this is the Tassel House, which is a very famous Art Nouveau room um, in Brussels, just gorgeous. So what I'm saying is the jewelry tends to look like flowers. It doesn't look like what we normally see as jewelry. And yeah, which is amazing and really cool. But I don't know, I didn't really get so much inspiration from that. There's Klimt, which is the same kind of time period as Art Nouveau. A lot of things kind of intertwine with Art Nouveau, like Vic some of the Victorian things and the arts and crafts movement has a lot of overlap. Uh, same thing with artists like Gaudi and of that time period and succession. Also, what I really like about, about Art Nouveau is the it was a time in history where information uh, started kind of getting more easily accessible. So artists were more inspired by art of the world, like um, Islamic art and Japanese art. And it kind of fused together in this very organic, um, back to nature style that I just really appreciate and love. And uh, there's um, Luca, which is a famous artist who was also of that time who did a lot of illustrations. And yeah, it's just such a gorgeous, gorgeous style. And peacocks seem to be a motif that is widely used in Art Nouveau. Um, uh, just a lot of flowers like irises and a lot of whimsical things. I. Yeah, I take so much inspiration from this particular style. So this is the Dremel that most people use, and it's like a rotating Dremel bit, but I think I tend to do much bigger wood pieces, um, carvings, such as um, if you want to check out that video, I did a video on my Art Nouveau door frame, which was definitely epically big, and I find the these tools just don't really, I don't get a lot of use out of them. I mostly use, when I'm not supposed to be using uh, that construction tool, the multi-tooled um, Dremel, but this um, is definitely useful for finer detailing. And uh, but I tend I tend to like stick to one tool and just kind of master it. If that makes sense. And I find that I can move around the other tool to to really do most of the stuff uh, that I need to do.
So I actually didn't have the proper tool, the smaller drill bit for the rotating uh, Dremel, so I had to take out another Dremel bit. This is a little bit smaller. Again, I kind of, it's so much quicker, and I got so used to it that I just move it around and really get the big chunks of wood that I need to get out to make the feathers and the, a lot of the detailing, and even kind of a little bit of the flattening, which is weird. Um, but yeah, I tend to gravitate towards this. It's probably a little bit more dangerous, but I never get injured from it, so who knows?
so I was able to go back to the store and get the Dremel bit that I needed. The price just adds up for all this stuff. Um, but yeah, I got it. It's This one's a kind of a shape like a pyramid. And I was able to get the finer detailings in, um, in a way it's kind of like, I use it as a little bit like a pre-sander uh, with the other tool. For all the beginning of the sanding, I used the multi-tool that I did a lot of the carving with, and there's a cool attachment that you just kind of stick it on, and there's a Velcro piece, and you stick it on uh, the actual sanding pads with this Velcro piece, and it's kind of brilliant, and I use that a lot uh, with the sanding. <laughs> I kind of, not the best sander, by the way, and it's the least favorite of carving projects.
so hand sanding is where I usually quit when I should go a little bit more in detail. Um, the problem is just so difficult and you don't really see a lot of the progress like you do when you carve something. There's such pleasure taking big chunks and seeing uh, something form. Uh, sanding, I just, I really just hate. So I didn't spend much time, not nearly as much time as I needed to. Uh, so it's a little bit of a rough piece because of that, but uh, I just hate it. What am I gonna do? So for the stain, I used this stuff. It was a little too glossy. I probably should have gotten more matte. Anyways, I find staining also very strange because, I mean, woodwork in, in general, you know, I have a mahogany piece that you'll see in the next video that I want to kind of match this, and it's an old aged mahogany piece. It's like a, a column thing that I cut and I made into like a, to, to hold a table up. Anyways, I got mahogany to match, and it's like a completely different color. So you can't really go by wood. Like, I guess there's like a million shades of mahogany. But, so I got this uh, color called Espresso. I don't know, it seems to be kind of matching, but it's, yeah, it seems to be a bigger art form. <laughs> would work in general, and I'm not a professional, so this is the part where I get a little bit frustrated.
So it kind of came out pretty cool. I'm very happy with the project. Um, <clears throat> this is the the room it's going in. It, it's a cabinet to cover up a dehumidifier that we use a lot of in the summer. And on the left, you could see the mahogany piece I'm talking about. And the table, it's a completely different color, is also mahogany. So one is like this golden color, the table top, and the other one is like ancient looking mahogany. So I kind of matched up with ancient looking mahogany with the color espresso. I hope you enjoy this video and see you next time.